Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Hillman. Just look at the number of people out here. This is a real tribute to the World Trade Center. And it's just an honor to be here in front of so many distinguished guests. I will say that part of the theme reminds me of a Yogi Bear joke, which to follow on from Senator Blunt, and that is when Yogi Bear said that when you come to a fork in the road, you should take it. <laughs> My thanks also go for, to Tim and the leadership of the World Trade Center for this opportunity to share the entrepreneur's perspective on how we can enhance our region's economy through increased world trade. Ambassador O'Malley, congratulations on your recognition today. We are fortunate to have an influential advocate for Missouri business in the Western, at the Western Gateway to the European Union. On a personal note, thank you for your support of Pipeline, a Missouri entrepreneurial organization where our executive director um, two months ago went to Dublin and met with the ambassador, and he's agreed next year to host 75 entrepreneurs in his residence for their 10-year anniversary kickoff, which will be a great thing for our regions. So thank you very much for that. When it comes to understanding the supporting of Missouri entrepreneurs, you truly walk the talk. Ladies and gentlemen, when I'm finished speaking with you today, I believe you will be as encouraged and optimistic as I am about the future of St. Louis. I have three key messages I want you to take away. First, I believe increased exports will drive our region's future prosperity. I have no doubt that with the current momentum in our region, we can and will do far better economically over the coming decade than we have over the past decade. But that's not enough. We ex what excites me is that we have an opportunity to turbocharge our progress by looking beyond our regional and national borders to become a greater participant in the global economy. Second, I believe entrepreneurs in our community, along with entrepreneurial-minded corporate players, can and will drive our region's growth trajectory. While our community's large multinational corporations will continue to play a sizable and essential role in growing the region's exports, I submit that it is the entrepreneurial minded that, who hold the keys that will unlock our region's long-term growth and prosperity. And my third message is our region is more ready to participate on the global stage than most people think. While there's almost more to be done, the infrastructure to support increased exports from born global businesses along with small to medium-sized businesses is largely in place. There's no secret sauce to making this happen. Here's what's required of all of us to do. Boldness and self-confidence to take risks and learn from setbacks. Taking the time to celebrate our success. I really don't think we do enough of that in our community and we could do a lot more of that. Having an open mindset to welcome and support a diverse community of entrepreneurs, native and non-native alike, and unqualified support and collaboration among the academic, financial, and service institutions in our community. Ladies and gentlemen, from wherever sector of the community we come from, large business or small, profit or not-for-profit, public sector or private, entrepreneur, our Fortune 500 executive, we must all play a part in making St. Louis a top leader on the world stage. I submit to you and to anyone with an interest in our region's future that we St. Louisans must define ours as a global stage. This isn't the time to think small, to act local, or shrink from boldness. To be a global leader, we must act like a leader. That shouldn't be hard. We are blessed with solid infrastructure, one that's getting stronger all the time. Examples include education institutions like SLU, UMSL, Webster, 
and Wash U, my alma mater, research facilities such as the Botanical Gardens and the Danforth Plant um, Science Center, large corporations such as Monsanto, Emerson, Enterprise, Sigma Ultras, just to name a few, and government and civic initiatives, including the World Trade Center, the Mosaic Project, BioSTL, I-10, Cortex, T-Rex, and others. Now is the time to seize upon our community's natural strengths, our work ethic, our central geographic location, our educated workforce, our high quality of life and moderate cost of living, and a remarkable ecosystem for entrepreneurs. I don't want anyone in this room to be confused by my statement that we here in St. Louis must define our stage as global. I do not mean that we need to look through a set of global lenses each time we are faced with tactical decisions. Rather, I mean that in the course of our strategic planning, as we set our overall business objectives, that we are mindful we compete in a highly connected and interdependent world. It is important we all recognize the technology-driven transformational forces that are changing not only our region, but the entire world. These forces are networking the world's populations, accelerating the global flow of information, talent, and capital, and enabling goods and services to cross national borders in record times. The facts speak for themselves. Global goods, services, and financial flows have grown a remarkable 25 times since the mid-80s to over $26 trillion today. Our world is fast becoming more urban, more educated, more tech-savvy, more affluent, and more outward-looking. And just as those on the other side of the globe are looking outward to our lucrative markets, we here in St. Louis must do likewise. The relentless change and transformation suggests massive opportunity. But it's an opportunity that is open not just to us here in St. Louis, not just to other regional economies across the US, but to virtually the entire world. No doubt the beneficiaries will be the ones who seize it. We here in St. Louis need to recognize this opportunity and be bold. The transformational force I just described have created a fertile environment for born global entrepreneurs around the world, the new breed of entrepreneurs depicted in the opening video. These are the people starting the types of businesses we must see more of here in St. Louis if we hope to significantly grow our exports over the long term. I imagine the term born global may be new to many of you, so let me take a moment to explain. The term born global was coined approximately 20 years ago from someone at McKinsey, um, and he describes that from its inception, it's outwardly focused, looking beyond its domestic markets to the world's markets, most often through export. Although commonly associated with businesses based outside the US, born globals are on the rise in this country. You've just seen a few of St. Louis's born globals portrayed. I ask the individuals featured in this video to stand for a moment and be recognized. <laughs> Simply doing business overseas does not make a company born global. Born global enterprises begin with a borderless view of the world. Within a few years of founding, they often are exporting their goods, services, or know-how, and in short order, their exports often account for a quarter or more of their business. So who are these born globals? Are they just small startups? Hardly. Certainly, they were at one time, but they can grow quickly to become familiar household names, including IKEA, a firm we St. Louisans will get to know better in just a few days, Amazon, Skype, and Uber. Born Globals have a distinct way of doing business that you can emulate from wherever you sit. Born Globals usually focus on a differentiation strategy, developing distinctive, high-quality products, targeting niche markets, eventually rolling out to wider audiences. 
and they make it a point to leverage technology, aggressively employing advanced information and communication technology to improve time to market and production efficiency. Most young born global firms tend to be self-financed while aggressively searching for angel and venture capital investment. As many of you may have heard earlier, I've just launched Lewis and Clark Ventures, one of Midwest's largest Series A venture and high growth funds. We are such believers in the potential of born global firms and entrepreneurs and their importance to the region's future that we have made born global potential part of our screening and evaluation process for new venture capital investments. And while the born global potential is not an acid test for an investment, we believe that businesses and entrepreneurs with true born global potential are good for our investors and great for our region. Born global entrepreneurs represent the long-term export growth opportunity for our region. However, over the short term to medium term, we will need to count on our traditional mainstream businesses to fill in the gap. One of the biggest areas of opportunity, I believe, is with our region's so-called emerging exporters, the small and medium-sized businesses who already have small export businesses or who are contemplating entrance into international markets. As you heard Tim say earlier, there are as many as 2,500 of these companies spread across our region whose export potential is barely tapped. I speak from experience because I am an owner of a few. So let me just give you a few examples. We started Gateway Media a couple years ago. We have 120 million users around the, the globe, but 25% are 30 million users are outside of the US. It is our fastest growing area in our business. It represents something that we believe is a trend and is something that we're counting on for the future. My second example is automation service. FTL Capital, my private equity vehicle, acquired the 60-year-old Earth City remanufacturer of process controls just over two years ago. At the time, automation service had fallen on hard times. It was bankrupt and literally saved on the courthouse steps. Rather than let the business go into liquidation, ending the jobs of over 145 people in North County, FTL Capital worked with Parkside Bank to finance a new lease of life on, on, for automation. With the support of an entrepreneurial management team, we engineered a turnaround. Automation has grown 25% since we took ownership. Exports account for 10%, and about 20 of our jobs at our plant depend on that export business. A few months ago, when Tim Nowak asked me to speak on the subject of global trade, I thought it'd be wise to take a deeper look at our portfolio's company's international business. Until recently, export didn't get much share of my mind, but it sure does. In fact, we now believe that automation service may have a meaningful business upside in the Middle East, Latin America, and Canada. To grow this business, it will take an entrepreneurial spirit, not unlike that of the born global entrepreneurs along with the commitment to play a larger role on a global stage. While spirit and commitment are necessary, they are insufficient. Our team needs more. An emerging exporter uh, is something that is very relevant to us, but we need market information, and we need to develop the skill sets to craft and execute an international growth strategy. To accomplish this, we will need some help from our friends, from parts of the infrastructure I referred to at the earlier start of my comments. I'm willing to bet that the people who can answer our questions are within a 200 mile radius of St. Louis and perhaps a lot closer. We just need an efficient way to identify who they are and how to tap into their expertise. As for other emerging exporters in our region, the questions no doubt are similar. They likely need help addressing issues of foreign business customs, tariffs and exchange rates, and international financing alternatives, just to name a few. While the questions are many, the knowledge is around us. It simply needs to be tapped. The good news is that help is on its way, and it's coming from many corners. For example, with the support of the Brookings Institute Global Cities Initiatives, St. Louis is developing an export plan 
that will provide an easy and efficient way to connect available trade expertise with our local needs. As to help from our educational institutions, I'm pleased to report that UMSL of Missouri now offers a Chancellor's Certificate program in international trade. It's designed explicitly for business people who want to develop the knowledge necessary to help their companies enter foreign markets or grow their international business. This is a program delivered online. It's a six module program just jointly sponsored with the World Trade Center. It addresses many of the international business topics aspiring exporters need to understand. Some of you may be surprised to learn that at American universities, for, foreign nationals account for 40% of those earning advanced degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math, the so-called STEM disciplines. These STEM students know, that their home, know their home countries, well, like a native. And when combined with university faculty, alumni, and their extensive networks, they provide an impressive pool of knowledge and a reference network right here in our backyard. I described this opportunity a few days ago to the managing director of the Scandalaire Center for Interdisciplinary Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Washington University. He enthusiastically embraced it, immediately offered to take on the organizational responsibility for developing a platform connecting the rising born glo global entrepreneurs with WashU faculty and local corporate specialists in exports. It's these connections that are really allowing us to advance in different ways. Ladies and gentlemen, I see a triple win opportunity here for local businesses, our universities, and their graduates. It's an opportunity to collaborate, to build stronger business ties and relationships, offer students practical hands-on experience, and ultimately to grow our region's global commerce. From the universities, let's move to how the professionals and financial services providers in the region can contribute to the knowledge we need. I'm thinking of the big accounting firms, the law firms, and the banks, particularly those who maintain offices or serve clients outside the US. These firms have an internal network that can help engineer exporters deal with the myriad of details sur surrounding the pursuit of global markets. The enterprises these professional service providers assist today could well become their pay paying clients tomorrow. And no, I have not forgotten St. Louis large multinationals. No doubt there are a number of you here today. Pro bono consulting and or networking assistance to a business seeking to export into a country where your firm already has a presence can make a difference in a very meaningful way for these emerging exporters of born global entrepreneurs. I'm sure the folks at AB know a thing or two about doing business in Latin America. And no doubt the people at Monsanto know a lot about exporting to Southeast Asia. The men and women of Boeing, one of America's largest exporters, have a great deal of knowledge about doing business in China. And I'm certain that the Malcra team has expertise in exporting to the EU. Don't think of this as a one-way street or a corporate handout. There will be rewards well beyond supporting the region's economy and helping St. Louis become a larger player on the global stage. Call it enlightened self-interest. You very well could steer new business and clients to your international vendors or service providers. Your support could also lead to a distribution agreement or a joint venture with a local company, possibly even a bolt-on acquisition. And perhaps the biggest long-term benefit could come from the interactions you have with our region's inspired entrepreneurs. You will have access to the type of innovative thinking that will engage your organization and I believe will be good for your company's bottom line. Ladies and gentlemen, my point is this. The expertise and the tools to help our local business turbocharge our region's growth via increased global trade and exports in particular are right here in our community. I'm certain many of the people who can make this happen are in this room. Everyone will benefit from getting engaged and working to support one another. I believe our small business community is a lot more ready for the global stage than that they may 
realize. It's a tech-savvy group. It's already well-connected. Much of the infrastructure is in place, including transportation systems. The opportunity is immense, and it is ours should we choose to compete for it. For if we don't, as Ambassador Malley said, someone else will. What it takes is a real passion to make it happen and a willingness to take risk. And speaking about risk, it's often the case that the greater the business risk, the larger the reward. Few here would disagree that over the past 50 years or more, St. Louis has been a relatively conservative city, particularly when it comes to taking the type of business risks I'm talking about. St. Louisans don't have the same risk profile as San Francisco or Boston or even Denver for that matter. But I believe things are changing here and I'm encouraged by the direction. Some of the change is being driven by native St. Louisans and an impressive amount of the entrepreneurial risk taking is coming from those born not just outside the region, but outside our country. We have a number of highly successful entrepreneurs in our community who took both the risk of starting a business as well as the risk of leaving their home country to resettle in America. Two of those risk takers are in the audience today, Kun Dang and Roberto Garcia, both of whom were featured in the Born Global video. I salute you gentlemen for your courage and your entrepreneurial spirit and hope you will serve as role models to other global-minded colleagues striving to broaden St. Louis's trade footprint. I want to also make a special call out to Betsy Cohn and of Mosaic and um, Don Rubin from BioSTL, your tireless effort to help those from overseas realize their dreams right here in St. Louis has been amazing. So great work for what you're doing there. In closing, I want to remind you of my three key messages. First, increased exports will be a key driver of our region's future success. Second, born global entrepreneurs along with entrepreneurial export-oriented businesses will play a key role in our region's growth. And third, St. Louis entrepreneurs and small to mid-sized businesses are more ready to seize this opportunity to play on the global stage than most people think. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to take the lead to do all you can to make our region a business community that thinks and acts global. Thank you.